Okay, so we're starting here in a default Blender scene. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I set up and configure one of my favorite add-ons, which is Machine Tools. And now this is a free add-on. You can find a link in the description. But uh, we're going to go to Edit Preferences, uh, go to Add-ons, and we are going to do Machine Tools here. Okay, it's Machine with a 3. All right. Enable that. Come down here. And there's a lot of different options in here and a lot of different things to turn on. And it's a little bit confusing, to be honest, when you first jump into it. But there's only a couple that I really like to utilize. And um, there's, there's, not, there's not a whole lot to it that I actually enable. So uh, I'm going to enable cleanup here, uh, smart vert. Uh, you could try smart edge or smart face if you want. That's entirely up to you. Um, I do like the focus mode. Mirror is pretty cool. There's some other ones in here, such as align and apply and all kinds of other fun stuff like that but uh, one i do like to turn off it's the modes pie okay so i don't utilize that and you'll have to get in here and play with these and see which ones you like and which ones you don't i do enjoy the save pie so i'll turn that on uh, there's a cursor and origin pie and the transform pie okay there's also a snapping pie which is uh can be useful as well All right, now I think I got most of them turned on. There's a Unity exporter, but I don't find it that useful. There's another add-on I like to use for doing Unity exports. So, click center object. All right, and then save your preferences once you have all this enabled. But basically, um, oh, and if you're completely new to Blender, key map, tab for pie menu is useful. So. All right, now what Machine Tools allows you to do is if we check here, I got to go back to preferences, sorry. Um, basically, it's a bunch of shortcuts with hotkeys or replaces pie menus. So in our key maps, this is where it gets interesting because it has all your hotkeys that you're going to end up using. So reference this if needed. Um, but there's a couple conflicts from the start. So one and three will conflict with your edit mode selections. Uh, so what I just do is I simply go clean up control three right here okay and then merge last uh, control one because apparently they weren't assigned by default so they actually do work quite well that way but um, we got the focus mode the mirror um, got the pie menus here cursor pie transform pie and these have little shortcuts so shift uh, button four shift button five um, Cursor pies, shift S, save pies, control S. So we'll try to go through this if I can remember all of it, but um, let's start with focus mode. And so basically if you got a bunch of objects you're creating and working on in object mode, you can select all these. Let's say you want to work on these three, you can press F. Now it's entered into focus mode right here. Um, and then let's say maybe you just want to look at this one, press F again, um, and you'll see that it just automatically um, zooms in on it, right? So that's not bad at all. If you press Shift F, oop, Control F. Okay, Control F it enters into a different kind of a focus mode. So it hides everything you don't have selected. So Control F again, and it'll keep doing that all the way down. Now, if you just um, press Control F, it'll toggle between hiding and unhiding your last. But if you click away from the object, press Control F, it'll start unhiding everything. So uh, that, that one's pretty cool. And it's pretty useful uh, once you get the hang of it. But we're going to move on from that. And we're going to check out uh, Shift and Button 4 on your mouse. It brings up the um, pie menu for your pivots here and all that. There's a couple presets. So there's local, individual, active, global, and cursor. All right. So anytime you want to adjust this, you can do that like so. So Shift and Button 4. Because uh, you're going to end up changing these around quite a bit um, with this add-on. All right. Uh, shift and button 5, which is the forward one. You now have a snapping menu, which is nice if you want to use that. Uh, personally, I don't use that a whole lot, but I just wanted to show it off real quick. Let's say you have an object on one side of an object. You can simply... Uh, Select this object and shift, select this one, make this the active element. You can now do, I think it's, see if I remember right, Alt Shift X. Oops, yeah, that's right. Alt Shift Y though. And it will mirror across this object. Basically, what it's done is it took this object, applied the modifier, um, 
with the axis you want and it's centered or created the mirror object as the cube so this is your mirror object now so it's a kind of automatic way of just creating mirrors real quick which is real nice because you might want to come in here and do like a alt shift and then x and then maybe alt shift and y Oop. Let's see if we can get this to work you can see here that didn't quite work out There we go. Oh, you got to select the object. I forgot. But and nonetheless, that's how it works. So you don't have to go over here and create mirrors every time. You'll have a kind of set up by default. Real nice, real handy. Uh, Control S now to save is a pie menu. You got save. You got incremental save, which is really awesome. You also have save as, new, open. Um, but then you have export on the fly here pretty much. So FBX export or OBJ export. A uh, real handy to have this if you're going to be going into Substance Painter or into Unity or whatever the case may be, um, you'll find that quite useful. There's also Purge, a pin link, all that fun stuff, but um, that's something you might want to check into. So we'll go into edit mode here. If I select these two vertices, I can now just press Control 1, I believe, and it merges that last. Control Shift 1, I think. Alt, Alt 1? I'm trying to remember here. Shift 1? Okay, Shift 1 is merge at center so shift one and then uh, control one right so now you can merge without having to press m every time which is really cool um, and this works with multiple selections so things like that but uh, real useful all right uh, let's say sometimes you're working on a mesh and you got say these faces here we've kind of done some things to them we got some weird stuff going on Let's say we gotta i'm trying to mess up my mesh a little bit here got like a double out here okay so this mesh is kind of crazy and we got some weird cuts and other weird stuff going on all right so this mesh is kind of crazy uh control three boom it's gonna remove doubles it's going to get rid of things that just make no sense um, and for the most part it cleans it up pretty well there's still some things you might have to adjust and manually clean up but just keep that in mind uh, it does work fairly well there's also a lot of extra little options here so you can always go in and start messing with these um, and taking advantage all right um, now let's take a look at the list here i think i missed one or a couple um Cursor and pie menu, yes. All right, so if you were to uh, press Shift S now, your cursor pie menu has changed. Uh, this is really good because basically uh, sometimes you'll find yourself um, wanting to place an origin point on a surface like this, right? And you can press Shift S and then hold Alt and do two face just fine, right? Um, and that's going to position it like you would, and you're doing this in edit mode now, so that's going to save you a ton of time. But it's positioned it like you normally would if you were to put the cursor there and then assign to 3D cursor. Um, but it gets better than that because if you were to say um, do a do a shift S and then two face without holding Alt, you'll see Alt only sets the origin location. But now you do just two face. Uh, it actually adopts the normal of this object. So when we go into the end panel here, we can center on the dot like we would expect it to do, but we can also center on the rotation. And so you can line that up like so if you needed to. It's just something really cool to do. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing because a lot of times what will end up happening is, let's say um, you're doing like this vertex, Shift S. Let's do cursor to vert. Um, you'll see that it changes your options here, okay? So it's it's changed it around, 3D cursor, cursor. And now it's, when you go back into start editing things and you're like, well, why is this not moving around the way I want it to? It's using the 3D cursor. And this is where shift and the mouse button four comes into play because now you can just do local or you can do global again. And it reconfigures all of it real quick. And so that's how it works kind of in tandem with each other. And then, but once you get the hang of it, it's really awesome. Uh, it, it just takes a little bit of a learning curve. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it. Um, it's extremely efficient.
Now there's a ton of stuff like I showed earlier that you can enable and try. There's all kinds of other options in here. Um, I probably won't end up using a majority of these, but it's certainly something you can look at and play around with if you want to. Okay. Um, but other than that, we got through all of these and um, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will check you out in the next one. All right.